Welcome everyone. For today's prep, we're gonna look at a few properties of the natural log function. And well, let's start with these properties and we're gonna see where they come from. So they're, they're all kind of related to our exponential rules. So let's read through these and kind of see what each of these set, uh, says. So we're gonna suppose X and Y are positive numbers. So the first property says that if we have multiplication going on inside the natural log function, we can convert this into addition between two separate log functions. So if we have natural log of x times y, we can break it apart, and it becomes natural log of x plus natural log of y. So what this one says is that if we have multiplication inside the log function, we can break that apart and it becomes addition outside the log function. All right. Well, we also have one for division. So if we have the natural log of x divided by y, well, we can break that apart and we can write it as natural log of x minus the natural log of y. So if we have division going on inside our log function, that becomes subtraction outside the log function. Um, and then similar, similar property here, if we have natural log of one over X, well, that's the same thing as negative natural log X. And really this is just a, a consequence of this. Um, we do have a natural log of one in front here, but natural log of one is just zero. <clears throat> and then finally, our other major log property says that if we have an exponent, so if we have x being raised to a power, and that's happening inside the log function, well, again, we can kind of break this apart. And what we can do is we can take that exponent and we can move it out in front of the natural log. So if we have an exponent going on inside the log function, that becomes multiplication outside the log function. <clears throat> All right, so where do these properties come from? Well, each of these properties really comes from our exponential rules. So let's just kind of remember some of our exponential rules. So the exponential rule that's related to this property says that if we have e raised to the x plus y, we can break this addition apart and we can write this as e raised to the x times e raised to the y. So here we're, we're kind of going, we'd be kind of going backwards. We're taking addition that's inside the exponent and we're converting that into multiplication on the base level. So that's kind of what we're doing here. We're going um, multiplication inside the log function and we're converting this into addition um, of the log functions. So it's kind of doing the opposite thing. And then we also had, um, if we had e raised to the x minus y, this would be the same thing as e raised to the x over e raised to the y. So here we're going from division between base terms, between exponential terms, and we can kind of consolidate those into subtraction of just the exponents. So when we're dividing exponentials, um, we just subtract the exponents. So that's what we're doing here. We're going from division to subtraction. And then our other exponent property um, that kind of matches up with this last one is for multiple exponents. So if we had say e raised to the x and then that whole thing raised to the power y, well what do we do when we have multiple exponents like this? We just multiply the exponents and we end up with <clears throat> e raised to the x times y. I guess I maybe should have used b, but no matter. So if we have multiple exponents, we multiply the exponents. So that's what we're seeing here, multiple exponents, and then we can just multiply. 
All right, so these are some of our log properties. These are the major algebraic properties of a log function. And they really kind of are related to these exponential rules. So let's uh, put a few of these into action. So let's try example one. We're gonna write this expression as a single logarithm. So the expression is natural log of five plus two times natural log three. All right, so we wanna use those some of those log properties that we saw. And we know when we look at this, we have two log expressions. We have natural log of five, and then we have two times the natural log of three, and we're adding them together. So if we look at our properties, we know one of them has to do with addition of two log terms. Now the issue is this two at two that's in front of the natural log three. If we look at this property, we can only use this property if it's natural log of something plus natural log of something else. Here we have this extra two. So we gotta do something about that. And so for this constant multiple, what we're gonna do is use, well, another one of our log properties. So if we look down, or maybe <laughs> scroll up. Um, <clears throat> what is the format here? Well, we have a constant times natural log of something. Well, if we look through our list here, which of these properties has that kind of term? We see that right here. So if we have a constant b times natural log of something, what we can do is, if we work backwards, we can essentially take this constant and move it inside the natural log, and when we do that, it becomes the exponent on whatever was inside the natural log there. So for our case, we're gonna take this two, we're gonna move it inside the natural log, and it's actually gonna become an exponent on the three. So this is gonna be equal to the natural log of five plus the natural log of three squared. So that two kind of gets an upgrade once it moves inside the natural log function, becomes a squared on the three. So that was property four that we used. All right, so now we have natural log of something plus natural log of something else. So now we, we have it in this form for the first one here. So we have natural log of something plus natural log of something else. So now we can use property one and consolidate these into a single log. And when we do that, we're gonna have natural log and then we're gonna take the five from the first log term there and we're gonna take the three squared from the second one and we're just gonna multiply those together and they're gonna be inside just one log function. <clears throat> so when we do that, that's property one. So we went from having addition outside the log function to now multiplication inside the log function. And we're done. Well, we can do the arithmetic there. This is just five times nine, which is 45. So we get natural log of 45. All right, let's try, let's try one more of these. So let's look at example two. So we wanna rewrite this as this expression as a single logarithm. And so we have one half natural log of four t minus natural log of t squared plus one. And again, we see that we have two log expressions. So we have this log term and this log term. And then we've got subtraction in the middle. So if we go back up to our list of properties, the property that has subtraction in between two different logs allows us to convert that into division inside the log function. Now, again, the one issue here is this only works if it's just, L, if it's just natural log of something. So our first term here has a one half in front. So it has a constant multiple. So we gotta do something about that constant multiple. And what we saw is the strategy for dealing with those constant multiples 
is to take the constant and move it inside the log function and then it gets upgraded and it becomes a, an exponent on the stuff inside. So that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to start with that constant multiple. So we're going to rewrite that first expression. It'll be the natural log. We're going to keep the 4t the same, but now the 1 half that was in front becomes the exponent on the entire 4t. So we do need parentheses around the 4t because everything here has to get hit by the, the square root or the raised to the power 1 half. <clears throat> All right, so then we've got our minus natural log t squared plus 1. And now we have natural log of something minus natural log of something. So we can use our property that says subtraction get, can, can get converted into division. So we're going to rewrite this as the natural log. And we're going to take the term inside the natural log as our numerator. So that'll be 4t raised to the 1 half power. And then the term that's the natural log term that's being subtracted here, the t, uh, natural log of t squared plus 1, that t squared plus 1, that's going to become the denominator inside here. So we've got our numerator and then our denominator. And that's really it. We could, if we wanted to, we could distribute this raised to the 1 half. So we could do the square root of 4, which is 2, and then we just have the square root of t. But um, perfectly fine to just leave it like this. So what we're seeing right now is we're taking kind of separate log functions and we're kind of combining them together to form a single log expression. In class, what we're going to look at is sometimes it's helpful to kind of do the opposite. So sometimes it's helpful to take a more complicated log expression like this and break it apart using these same properties. So we're going to get a little practice of that in class. So we'll see you then. Bye-bye.